I wanted to make a video for teachers um, using Progress Book. It's an online grade book for teachers. Uh, our school district uses it. I'm just going to show you a few um, features that you might not be aware of, um, but are very helpful. First feature I'm going to show you is in the lesson planning. Uh, let's say I was going to make lesson plans. I would title it. And I had mine set up a certain way, obviously. Um, but we had, if you have to turn yours in, um, then make sure you schedule it. You fill it out how you want it. Um, let me go ahead and save this right now, even though it's all these features will pop up um, where you can schedule the lesson, which is what you need to do uh, to make it viewable to an administrator. Uh, that way they know what lesson plans you are uh, using. Um, if you're like me, I use just a simple embed spreadsheet on my uh, wiki page that we use in my classroom. Uh, it's embedded by a Google Doc. This is a Google Doc. In order to do that, <clears throat> you have to publish it to the web. Um, and then... Uh, It'll change on your, you click on embed or link, embed for your website, link for progress book, you copy that link, and then all you have to do is erase the rest of this because you don't need it. You know, and then you can just insert your link. there insert link and then when as long as you schedule it which I like to schedule it for the whole year and my administrators are fine with that and then select the classes it's for and hit schedule I won't do that because I have mine set up the way I like it um, then you can just go to your Google Docs and update your lessons and never have to log back in. That's one way to do it. You can add your standards in there. Um, they have um, just got to make sure that you don't select the old standards. Uh, but it's, it's kind of nice to set up your lesson plans. Uh, but here's another feature that teachers might not know. Um, you can add teachers to your school district and you can set up sharing in progress book with other teachers other teachers can view it you can even set up editing for that as well I have some that I added mine and then when you're all done you can always search your lesson plans from years past you can put in keywords to search as well. You can search by year. These are all old lesson plans that I had. What grade you taught. Keywords could be sentence. Anything that has to do with the word sentence or complex. These are all dealing with just complex writing. And it's pretty, pretty neat to have um, that availability to search your lessons and just tweak what you've done before. The other feature are the seating charts. Now, when I click add my students, I can select the hand button. If I want to move people around, I can easily move them around to where I need to move them to. And hit save. And then that will be their new seating chart.
Let's say if I didn't want someone in there, I can move them around. We go back to my original page. Just some features in Gradebook Grid. How to create an assignment. Make sure that postmarks to the web, that parents can see it, and you put a good description in and hit save. Let's just say hmm, practice for one point. I'll do 10 points. All right, and I'm going to make sure it's for this class. I can post it to the homework page, which is pretty important. That way, it's students and teachers and parents can see it. And hit save. It says you need to select a assignment type. I hit save. And this is the feature that I like to do. If a student is missing this homework assignment, I can put missing and then a comment. If I want. You can also see it says exclude and post exclude. Um, I can just put in there you have the end of the week and then I can hit save. Now if I made a mistake making this, maybe I didn't set this up right, I can easily delete it right here and delete the assignment. So now there's no assignment there, which I think you can do the same thing faster if you create assignment. Let's create another one. Post to the web. Let's hit save. You can select other classes if you want. Now, before, if I went missing, now I just need to do a question mark. If I want to exclude a kid, I have an um, explanation point. If it's late, I just put a T. If I want to exclude him and post it so he knows he's excluded, it's double. All right, double uh, explanation point. And these are all little shortcuts so now I'll come up with a different color if I don't like the grades I put in or if I don't want them on my progress book anymore I just delete it from the bottom left hand side now it's not there so those are two pretty effective ways to use progress book progress book a couple other things that you should probably do in progress book is post your class information even if you put in a, a small contact page or link some of your information you know just a simple lessons from class um, you just wanted to put in a few maybe you're not a big time tech person but you wanted to put a few lessons from class um, your information on there then you can put the classes you need to see that um, and hit save and then it would have your lessons from class it have all your next informations it would have your resources on there as well and your documents also if you share kids like with a um, another teacher you can easily add in uh, another person to your gradebook. Um, you add teachers to your gradebook. You find the teachers' names. 
that you'd like to add. You select the teacher. And you hit update. It'll add that teacher to the actual grade book so they can enter to grades for their students, such as intervention specialist could enter her kids' grades. That's kind of an important feature um, to when you share kids and also working with the intervention specialist when she grades. That way she doesn't give you the grades and have to put them in or he or she would have to put them in.